The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Morning. I want to welcome you to uh, this week's webinar from CW Group, where we're looking at the global craft paper and bag market uh, in 2025. So uh, briefly today, uh, the agenda is that I would like to give an introduction to CW. Then we will uh, launch into the actual highlights of the craft paper bag market and uh, our perspectives on how the various end user segments are likely to perform over the next five years. So um, today's presenters including myself, uh, Prashant Singh. I'm a CW Group's Associate Director out of Mumbai, India, and my colleague uh, Vanderson Teixeira from uh, the Porto office will be uh, sharing duties uh, on this presentation today. So uh, please bear with me for those who've attended multiple uh, times our webinar. For those who haven't, I'll just take a quick snapshot of who we are as a company. So CW Group actually is present across three different verticals. We are involved in the advisory, research and media spaces under advisory. We work with major global consultancies, as well as leading institutions, including the World Bank, and funds on various projects. We also provide consulting and advisory expertise on a diverse product portfolio. Um, whereas under research, we focus predominantly on cement demand, as well as uh, detailed industry and country reports. Uh, we provide historical, as well as forecast for the markets in a variety of products, including uh, cement, uh, white cement, and um, slag, clinker, etc. Today we're here to discuss the global craft paper market and we will um, we also do specific reports on that. We also provide commodity price assessments uh, for clinker, cement, as well as pet coke and coal. Under the media umbrella, uh, we have an online access to our vast database where we, you can also subscribe to newsletters for various <laughs> topics of interest, as well as magazines, and also access to industry-specific meetings. So let's launch into the highlights for this report. So, what does this report include? 
Uh, as you can see, there's a detailed link at the bottom, which uh, you will all receive this presentation. So please feel free to go to that link to access all the details that you can find. So what is this key report focus on? We are focusing on four different uh, end users in this webinar. So we're looking at, sorry, uh, we're looking at building materials, agriculture, food products, and chemicals. We have other multiple products and end user segments, but we are not including this in this webinar. You will find all of those details and information in our report. Uh, next slide, please. So before we, before we begin any discussion as to the actual impact of the report, it's actually very important to give a multi um, macroeconomic perspective of where the global economy stands today. And as you can see from the slides, uh, the picture could not look any more gloomy. Um, the global economic scenario seems to be progressively getting worse with each passing week as new data is released. Uh, the global economy faces unprecedented challenges uh, on a level not seen since the Great Depression. In fact, the level of economic devastation is almost akin to a hurricane or tornado, which is passing through a vulnerable neighborhood. What remains is scarcely unrecognizable and will need extensive help to rebuild and get back to the state it was, which in 2019 was not really a great year from the global growth perspective. Now, the, the numbers that you see above are from investment banks. Uh, so, you know, we take that with a grain of salt. But even the US Federal Reserve uh, Chairman, Mr. Jerome Powell, uh, said that an economic recovery could take until the end of 2021. Uh, he does feel that a, there will not be a whole depression, full blown depression, but the fact is that a V-shaped recovery appears to be, the chances appear to be very minute. Now, um, natural calamities, including like hurricanes and tornadoes, only complicate efforts that the world is sort of confronting in, uh, in, in the pandemic. And um, one, one example is just the pandemic that is, uh, one example is the hurricanes or uh, hurricane Amphan that has just made landfall on the eastern coast of India and Bangladesh. Now, why is this important? This region is a very important area for growing of jute. And um, the plant will, the, the, grow, the production of this uh, plant will now be affected because of sort of the economic devastation caused by the rain, you know, flooding. And so this will obviously have an impact on prospects of which industrial uh, users now have to choose between using different products. So even isolated events like these can have a bearing on our market. Aside from the economic crash, a huge spike in unemployment numbers, as you can see uh, on this map, uh, has already sort of passed globally. So the United States uh, is, was the leading epicenter uh, in terms of cases. It still is uh, because it has now 1.6 million infections. But now the two leading uh, hotspots seem to be Russia, uh, which has now almost 330,000, as well as Brazil. Uh, which is slowly creeping up to more than around 300,000. And as we can see from the picture, this story is far from, uh, you know, uh, over. Uh, we expect this to continue for the foreseeable future um, until a vaccine actually takes hold. So let's launch into what uh, everybody here has come into, uh, some of the highlights from uh, this particular report. So um, when we look at this segment, the building materials segment, sustainability awareness is increasing, uh, demand for renewable packaging material. The use of paper bags is significantly reduces the total carbon emissions of cement packaging. The above being said, paper stacks are still most predominantly used in Western Europe with other regions having varying degrees of use. However, uh, with increased focus on climate change and the negative impact of plastic pollution, the renewability of paper sacks is becoming an increasingly important pitch 
even in these markets. Uh, cement and building materials are likely to remain uh, a key end user for craft paper bags, a demand globally. And even countries like India, where LDP and PP bags once dominated the cement scene, you have uh, major cement groups actually now shifting their use towards paper bags. And this is predominantly not driven by only just environmental concerns, but by financial benefits because the Indian cement industry is nothing if not very, very um, penny wise. So if they're making a transition from these other types of bags to paper bags, there definitely is a financial motive that is uh, you know, uh, linked with this transition. Uh, major global sack producers have already started witnessing a decline uh, in demand from major end using sectors, which is cement and building materials. The quantum of decline in the length of this paralysis is yet to be determined. An important factor that may mitigate a short-term decline is the fact that most governments see construction as an essential sector, and both for the economy as well as employment, and therefore encourage its uh, functioning, albeit with enhanced COVID-19 safeguards. Access to raw material, increased pulp prices, reduced demand due to COVID-19 are important for consensus on the sector. Next slide, please. So uh, within the agricultural sector, uh, this industry segment is bulk dominated with bulk, with the bag component accounting for uh, a small share of the pie. That pie is in fact even smaller when we come to craft paper sacks as they compete in a very challenging environment of PP woven, HDP and jute bags. However, the long-term trend is absolutely in favor of craft paper, not only because of sustainability, but because as innovations increase paper strength and reduce weight, it becomes even more competitive to its substitutes. Uh, more importantly, China is actually uh, initiating a paradigm shift in application, uh, initially targeted towards agriculture and grains in particular. So China is seeking to leverage its extensive container capacity as a means of transforming the current logistics model, which is focused on bulk. So what the implication is that a shift towards bag demand from China will not only result in an increase in craft paper sack use, obviously in China, but because of its huge market will almost certainly impact the behavior of the export markets focused on China. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in, in the food market, this industry segment is quite unlike the others because it is predominantly bag dominated and within the bags, craft paper sacks have an important share across all regions. Uh, refined sugar in particular is favored as a material to be shipped in bags while PP woven bags are also used. Craft paper sacks are generally utilized for this particular product. Um, why? Because craft paper bags are of course lined in order to protect the food and maintain its flavor, but so are PP woven bags but it has often been found that the taste of the product at times is altered uh, in a PP woven bag due to the composition of the bag over time. So that's why uh, since scrap paper bags are like uh, flavor neutral, uh, there's a strong preference, at least in this industry segment uh, for craft paper. Um, as we move to the next segment, uh, chemicals. Chemical products, uh, remain a preferred domain for bulk or big bags due to the nature and the volume of the product. Uh, and uh, this sector, however, does show significant growth prospects over the forecast period as we shift, we expect a shift more towards bag for this product. Um, however, of course, HDP and PP woven will continue to hold the lion's share for the foreseeable future. But in markets, uh, we are already seeing craft paper making a slow but steady progress. Um, I would I would like to hand over this presentation to my colleague, Vanderson. But before I do that, I wanted to excuse uh, the 
noise that you heard. It was my daughter who was taking advantage of me being at home and not in the office to create a, a havoc. So please do excuse that. So Vanderson, please uh, take it away. Thank you, Prashant, and hello, everyone. Now, when we look at our global outlook picture, we go much more in depth in our report. But of course, for the sake of this webinar, we'll be focusing on the main end user segments and also providing a view of the other end users analyzing this report. Uh, as you can see, globally, the graph paper bag market size is expected to grow at its 2.6% for our forecasted period, which is from 20 to 20, 25. Although this is not exponential growth, definitely shows signs of a healthy industry. Looking at the end user segments, we can see that agriculture, which includes wheat, soybeans, and other coarse grain markets, is expected to lead the growth of the craft paper bag industry. Now, if we take a look at a Merrimacro chart presented, we observe that most of this growth is driven by Asia, including China, followed by Latin America market, which is already a very strong craft paper industry, especially in Brazil. Focusing on the cement industry in Brazil, manufacturers have committed to shift for 25 kilo bags over the next seven or eight years uh, instead of 50 kilo bags, which of course, in the long term, will affect positively the number of craft paper bags. Um, now, this will bring Latin America on the same consumption patterns as Western Europe, and should other regions follow this lead, the benefits for the craft paper industry are obvious. Uh, if we shift our perspective and look at the end users segments, we can see the agriculture, uh, which includes wheat, soybeans, and other coarse grains, is expected to lead this growth of the segment. And so to finalize, I would like to thank you for your attention. In case you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. We'll see you on the next webinar. Bye and have a nice day.